Jan Robs Press seeking part of the brand in the market is Pureport. My name is Ed Bart. This is Andres Valet. Andres has been cutting at uh, Shamrock for 11 years. That's how long the chief of department has been in business. Total experience cutting along with two other gentlemen he worked with is uh, 21 years experience standing right here before you today. Uh, we're going we're to talk about halibut today because one of the big words out there in the market is sustainability. So what does sustainability mean? It means that we do not want to have our fisheries around the world overfished. There's a lot of that going on. So we, we are taking part in an effort to use science-based management principles to figure out how much resources are there. That's what we call the biomass. We pick a number that's safe and errors on the side of caution that we're going to harvest. We're, har we're not going to harvest too much. We're going to harvest what we feel we know can reproduce safely in a given cycle so that we maintain a balance of the ecosystem. So whatever we take today is going to be replaced tomorrow. And the way that we fish, we fish in a way that has minimal impact on the environment. So sustainability is very, very important. We're going to have Andres break this halibut down to loins, and then he's going to continue with uh, portions, and the portions will be served at your buffet tonight. Woo! This fish is a small fish by halibut standards. Halibut are flounder, the Pacific halibut, and the Atlantic halibut are the largest of, the, of their particular uh, family. The largest halibut in the state of Alaska was was caught was, has been caught on record is 493 pounds. That was bested two years ago by a, a German angler in a charter boat off the coast of Norway. An Atlantic halibut was caught that was 515 pounds. Wow, holy cow. So you can see how big they get. You may have also heard of a California halibut. That is a flounder also, but it's a different family than the Pacific halibut. It's what we call a large tooth flounder, and it Andres, stays very small. Is holding that up with the bone? So clean look, enough for you guys? Wow. Look how clean that uh, the yeah. side is. He's not That's leaving awesome. anything on the bone. And you notice that there's a Food white cost. there's a white side and a dark side. The flounder lays in the bottom with the white side down, the dark side up for camouflage. So it has two different colors. So if you ask for a top loin, we're going to give you the dark, dark side. If you ask for bottom loin, we're going to give you the white side. Any different on taste or cut or? No, just a little different on thickness. People like the top loin because it's a little bit thicker. Uh, to give you a, a little history on the halibut fishery. Halibut fishing started in the Atlantic coast in about the early 1890s. The original method of fishing was to go with a mother ship out on the grounds and there would be large dories about 20 foot long with two or three gentlemen in each dory and the fishing would all be done by hand. But uh, very quickly on the east coast of the Atlantic, the fishery was overfished and wiped out. So not having anything to catch, the Atlantic fishermen found out that there were halibut in British Columbia and southeast Alaska, so they migrated to the west coast started fishing over there and look how clean that is. Very little bit of beef. Excellent job. One of the benefits of Shamrock is the, the, the way we cut. We we intentionally over trim things. So if you hear that your competition say, well I'm, you're selling us fifteen fifty nine a pound but I can buy it from this other guy for fourteen ninety nine. The difference between the two of us is that we're not going to leave anything on that play when you get it that you're going to have to trim off. So your yield is going to be pretty close to what you bought. So even though it may sound like 60 cent a pound difference, because of the way we trim and, and take that hit ourselves in the production plant, your play cost is probably cheaper from a fact we know it's cheaper from us. Uh, anyhow, when the, uh, when the Atlantic fishermen moved to the west coast in the early 1890s, they, they started overfishing the west coast just like they did in the east coast. And that created a concern by industry that they're going to come over to the West Coast and wipe us out the way they did the, the East Coast. So in 1923, the uh, government of Canada and the government of the United States created a commission to prevent the overfishing. They created a body that convened in 1923 called the International Pacific Halibut Commission. That is the longest running organization that has managed sustainable fisheries in the history of North America, is the International Pacific Halibut Commission. Their job is to go out on a regular basis at every port that has halibut landed. They have support samplers at each location. They measure their length, their girth, their width. They take the head, which is not markable, but in the head at the port, you can go behind the ear and make an incision and cut out a little, little piece of bone, a little piece of cartilage. It's called the otolith. The otolith has rings like a tree, and that's, you can count those rings, and that tells them what the age of the halibut is. So they do that at the port when fish are being landed. The Halibut Commission also 
uh, hires fishermen to go out and charters on their behalf to do fishing in different regions of the Pacific Northwest and in Alaska. And when the fish are on board, there are observers. They take every fish that's caught, again, they measure it, they take the age, they take all of this data. And what we've found over time is that every 20 years, the growth cycle of halibut slows down. They don't mature as quickly. A halibut will not reproduce until it's eight years old. And when, eight years old. And when you're in a down cycle, sometimes they will not reproduce until they're 10 years old. So as an example, 12 years ago, the halibut catch in North America was 74 million pounds. This year, the catch is only allowed to be 16 million pounds. And the reason for that is the information, the data that the, the Halibut Commission takes is used to regulate the resource, make sure we don't overfish, and they control how much we take and what they allow us to take is enough fish that we know will, re will reproduce in one cycle, so we're maintaining that balance in the ecosystem. Uh, as I said earlier, Halibut is a flounder. It's called a large four-eyed halibut flounder, and that is the biggest of all the families of flounder in the ocean. The word halibut comes from the Catholics. On holy days, when they abstain from eating meat, they love to eat flounder. Halibut is two Latin words, halli meaning holy, and but meaning flounder. It's a holy flounder. <laughs> so that's where halibut came from. So when you hear about a California halibut as opposed to a Pacific, uh, Pacific halibut, they are flounders, they are called halibuts, but they are different families of flounder. One is very small, these get very large. The majority of the halibut caught in North America is caught in Alaska. The International Halibut Commission has been around since 1923. The state of Alaska became a state in 1959. The brochures that I handed out to you just a moment ago are from the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. They talk about sustainability and how they manage their fisheries. The Alaska State Constitution mandates that not only seafood, but every resource in the state of Alaska be managed with sustainable management principles so that we know how much we've got, we don't over harvest, and we take care of the, the harvest in a way that minimally impacts the environment. So sustainability is a big thing, because it's not about, it's about every resource that we come in contact with. Mining, fisheries, forest, water, you name it, resources. To be able to perpetuate those uh, resources, we have to be good stewards of our environment, and that's what sustainability is all about. And this is the oldest example of a fish, sustainable fishery product in North America right here in front of you today. And they're fun to catch. Like I said, uh, 493 pounds was the biggest halibut caught in Alaska years ago, bested by 515. Uh, I took my son to Alaska in 1990. He was, he was six years old. And we caught a 223 and a 256, and those folks are big. Yeah. Those, those are huge. And I've got it all on video. <laughs> How much is this one? This is about a 30 pounder, it's a small one. Uh, majority of our customers prefer uh, fish cut from a 4060, which is a bigger piece. Uh, we'll have new stock of 4060s tomorrow. But we brought this because that's what we, were, what we had left. Uh, yeah, this is called a chicken. Yeah. Small halibut are referred to as chicken, big halibut are referred to as whales. Uh, something that people don't know too much about is how halibut cheap. The head of the halibut, like I mentioned before, is taken to the port to cut off the fish. The fishermen are paid for the eight headed and gutted uh, halibut, but the head does have a very nice, delicate cheek. Very, the, the fishery in Alaska right now this year is 16 million pounds. I managed a plant in Alaska for 10 years, and I was required by my owners to cheek every kind of halibut that came across the dock. So I can tell you from 10 years of experience checking inventory that if you cut every halibut head that comes across your dock, you're going to get half of 1% recovery. So at 16 million pounds, you're going to get 80,000 pounds of cheeks. 80,000 pounds of cheeks don't end up in the market, and here's why. Number one, the fishermen don't get paid for that yet. And if they want the cheeks, they have the right at the dock to take them back aboard their boat so that the processor doesn't get to market those for free. They can take them home. So probably half of those heads go back in the boat and they're consumed domestically. Another half of those are thrown away because when the halibut comes out of the water and the fisherman gaps it through the cheek with a hook, he ruins one side of the cheek. So that 80,000 pounds goes down to 40,000 pounds. Realistically, probably only 20,000 pounds of cheeks ever make it to market. 
uh, they run about $14 a pound. But because we can't get them on a regular basis and count on them, uh, we handle it for one restaurant locally, and most of the time when we order them, we don't need them. Uh, but cheeks are very delicate and very well known, but uh, not very abundant. So that's what we have for you today. Thank you. Well, I just want to throw out here because, you know, I've been stressing chefs and certification and we have educators and what kind of fish is a flounder? But brown fish, flat fish, it's on the test. Yes. So it's flat fish, right? Santos, huh? Flat fish, huh? I was just, I'm kind of teasing but telling the truth too. It, it'll give you varieties in these certification tests of any level. That's one that can come up. It'll it'll say what's a trout, round fish, flat fish, or flounder, or halibut. So. And also, uh, in terms of yield, we started with a head and gutted full fish. We took the four loins off. That was about a 70% yield. So that was probably a 35 pound fish. So we probably ended up with 28 pounds of skin on loins. And then he took the skin off, which is another 10% loss. Plus he trimmed and portioned it. Our yield in that is only about 50%. So that's why the price of halibut is so high. Further down you go, the more you do with it, the less you end up with the more costs. Any questions? What, that one fillet had a big blood spot. Yes. What causes that? That was caused by a, a, a abuse on board the vessel. That was busted in some place. It probably came over the rail and hit the edge of a uh, the hatch. Impact. That's an impact. And before it's clean, it'll bruise like that, right? That's pretty much no different than if we bruise. Yeah. It's automatically. It's, that's an internal hemorrhage from, from uh, physical abuse on board the vessel. Was that, would, would, I know that impairs appearance. Would that impair taste also, if somebody would serve that or put it uh, in a chowder pot or something? I would, personally, I would cut it out. Okay. Yes, it will have taste, and I don't think they're going to like it. All right. What uh, collar meat? You guys, is that marketed as collar meat? Is that readily available from channel rocks? We keep a certain amount of the collar and the entire carcass in our freezer. We call it white fish bones and we sell it at almost nothing. So if you want it for soup stock or take the collar, you can do that. We save it. We don't save it all because our freezer would get too full, but we save enough where there's always at least about 100 to 150 pounds in the freezer available if somebody asks for it. We sell about 40 pounds a week. How much is those pounds? The uh, white fish bones? Those go for three dollars and thirty six cents a pound, as opposed to sixteen for the, for the whole flight. Uh, the Shamrock Food Seat Department does uh, works six days a week. We take Sundays off. The only holidays we have off are Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, we have uh, three cutters with, with twenty one years experience with Andres, Israel, and Jesus. We have a total crew complement of, of eight people. Myself as a manager, one customer service person a HACCP QA uh, organizer, receiver type person. And by the way, receiving is very important because if you don't like someone who comes to the door, put it back in the truck and keeps your vendors honest. Uh, our total output per year is, three years ago, it was 1 million pounds. We've done well this year with 1.3 million, about a 13 million dollar value. And that's what we do, what we call just-in-time inventory. We do not pre-cut ahead. Uh, the order is taken, either the sale puts it in and punches it in, or your customer does, or if after you call us, we'll do it for you. Uh, 1.3 million pounds a year in five pound, 10 pound increments. One thing that sets us aside from our competition, a lot of places is you, if you punch a five pound lid, you gotta take five pounds. If it's a 10 pound case, you gotta take 10 pounds. If it's a 30 pound case, you gotta take 30 pounds. Uh, we do just the opposite. We encourage direct contact. We encourage you to call me specifically. I'm at the order desk. I handle all the labels. So if you punch a 10 pound lid, you want six. That's great. Call me up. Say, Ed, I just punched a 10 pound label. If I only want six, I'll change the pack size, and you'll get what you ordered. Not too much. Not too much. Yes, sir. Are most of your customers getting their fish fabricated already? We do a lot of portions for buffet groups, for caterers. Uh, most of the white table restaurants take it skin on or skin off as a whole side and do their own cutting. That 
What is the biggest selling fish in the fish department? 80% of our sales are salmon. In fact, here are the drivers in the seafood department. Our drivers are salmon number one, followed by yellowfin ahi tuna, ahi mahi, swordfish, uh, halibut. Those are probably the top drivers, but 80% of salmon. Uh, farm salmon, what you're going to hear about Rolasa salmon, which is a new product in the market that has a very different business model than existing commodity salmon. Uh, I'll let Brian talk to that. I have a quick question. Uh, I was told yesterday or the day before um, a difference between organic, clean, farm raised salmon and First come, first serve at dinner. It's <laughs> <laughs> about 35 to 40 portions there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was guessing. Enjoy. Thank you. All right.